Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it is time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 385. This is all about adding on to what you already have <laughs> or learning something new or seeing something that you've never seen before. I have got products from Creative Expressions, part of their Cosmic Shimmer line. I have got the latest Simply Defined Kaleidoscope dies for you. This is the February collection. I've got new Sue Wilson dies that are just the smallest, little, tiniest, cutest little things ever. And I hope a technique that you will learn from and be willing to get a little inky and give it a whirl and try. There is something here for everybody. We are definitely going to be die cutting, but if you are not a die cutter, that's okay. I've got something for you too. Or if you've always wanted to learn more about die cutting, well, this will be a good YouTube for you. However, a better one is my YouTube class number 355, which is the latest do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot Machine. So I, my whole desk is all in front of me. I've got so much play stuff. <laughs> but before we get started with that, let's give you some updates as to where we are. We The retail store is still closed and we will remain closed until I think all of us are vaccinated. Once all of our store employees have received the vaccination and as of now, none of us have received any vaccinations. So just as soon as that happens, I think that's when we'll look to reopen the store. We are offering curbside pickup to those locals who wanna shop specifically from the YouTube Yummies category only. It's the only place you can pick product from. We're, we're really limiting it to, to what's being featured in the YouTube. And then online sales, we are shipping, well, the first 400 orders from the warehouse sale are upstairs. The second 200 orders are in line to come upstairs sometime next week. So if you chose a pay later and you ordered within the first hour of the warehouse sale, keep an eye out. You may be receiving a PayPal payment request. We are shipping YouTubes from 2021 right at our 30 day time frame, which is our normal standard time frame for shipping. And we are catching up on our 2020 YouTubes. We're almost there, just a little bit longer, and we will be all caught up. There, there is a light at the end of my tunnel. <laughs> we are such a small little skeleton crew here, but we are the little engine that could. We will not give up, ever. <laughs> I am not one to throw in the towel. So keep an eye out for your, your most recent orders shipping within the standard shipping time frame. You're gonna be getting older orders at the same time and warehouse sale orders. I know some of you have already received yours and have sent emails saying yay! And Black Friday orders are also shipping. So it's all going out as quickly as we possibly can. Thank you for your patience and your understanding while we navigate this new normal, whatever normal's going to be. Now I have winter, winter chicken dinner for you and I will tell you, I really hurt my back last week. It's been a week now and it, it, <laughs> they've actually got, they've got towels and pillows propped up behind my back so I can sit up. Otherwise, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> That means I can announce our winner winner chicken dinners, but I cannot do the winner winner chicken dinner dance. Oh no. <laughs> so you're going to have to do it for me this time. You're going to, if you've never stood up to get the winner winner, do the winner winner chicken dinner dance, this is the time because I cannot. I will do my best, but there'll be no grooving and moving, that's for sure. Now we'll read off those names and then I think we're going to get started with the Creative Expressions Cosmic Shimmer product and not my dies. I'm going to show you the three dies that I have for you for this release, but then we're going to start with the Cosmic Shimmer product because that's the product that if you are not a die cutter, you still may want to have this. And I'm going to be honest with you. This product is extremely limited. Like in the world, it's limited. There's very, very few companies that have it we have almost all of it. And even then, it's not a ton. We don't have oodles and oodles and oodles. There's only eight colors 
and with supply chain issues and getting bottles and lids and things like that, it has just really made things a little more difficult. The, the, the powder's ready to go, but they got nothing to put it in. So if it's something that you might like, I would recommend getting your order in because I talked to Lizanne at Creative Expressions this morning. I, I had an email from her and she said she doesn't know when they'll be able to get more out to literally the world. So we kind of have a little exclusive on it. Oh well. <laughs> it wasn't intended, but that's what happened. <laughs> chicken dinner and remember you all have to dance for me oh the first one is easy peasy we have okay the first name's easy peasy the second name you just saw me pause and go quiet that's because it's going to I'm just gonna do my best our first winner winner of a $25 gift card to scrapbooking made simple is Gwen Gwen Mills. Congratulations, Gwen. You are a winner, winner chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and your $25 is already waiting for you in your account. Wahoo ka -choo. And our second winner is, is it Juana? Juana Lubian? Lu Lubian. Juana Juana Lubian? Is that right? Gosh, I'm so sorry if it's not, but does it really matter? You won. There's your name. That's all good, right? <laughs> as long as that $25 lands in your online account, you're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So girls, uh, we have to do the winner, winner, chicken dinner dance, and this is where I need everybody to help participate. Uh, kind of like kind of like Tinkerbell. We all have to clap to get her to fly again. You guys have to do the dance for me. So you're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. See, no rocking and rolling. I can't. I really can't. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that my back is better in the next week or so. It is just, it is a hot mess. <laughs> and I don't even know what I did to make it seize up, but it's both sides. Oh, so, okay, on we go. Like I said, I think I'm gonna start with the Pixie Sparkles because that really will introduce you to something that maybe you don't know about or maybe you have the original Pixie Sparkle or the Pixie Powders from Creative Expressions or maybe you have something similar from Ken Oliver or maybe you have Brushos. These are going to work with all of those and they have a bit more oomph to them. <laughs> a bit more oomph. So I'm gonna tilt on down and get started I'll show you some some card samples. I'm going to show you the dies, and then we'll move into the Creative Expressions product. Are you ready? Down we go. I'm smiling so I don't cringe as I pull my camera down. <laughs> oh, ouch! Yeah, they have me propped up <laughs> so I can do this. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I think that's you think that's okay. I think that's okay. Let's show you card number one. This is from Doris. And that is one of the latest and greatest from Simply Defined. It's one of my kaleidoscope dies. And then let me put this back with Doris. And then I have, I don't know if this is Claire. I think it's Claire. But I'm not positive. And then open it up. That's another one of my dies. And then the last one is from Elena. And there's the third. So now that you've gotten an opportunity to see this, the latest Kaleidoscope dies, here they are. So Kaleidoscope dies are a set of four dies in one package. Each die is an A2 size, so a standard card making size here in the United States. You get all four dies. We always do one background. And these are layering dies that you can use on their own together. You can layer them in many different ways. This would be, there's the first one. 
So I showed you that card. And again, all four dies you get. The second is here. And I kept the hummingbird separate, so you could use the hummingbird all on its own, but the hummingbird absolutely layers. And I threw some words in where there was empty space. And then the last one I have for you is my potted plants, which I think might be my favorite. My potted tulips. And again, all four dies, including a background die. And a lot of people will use the background dies just on their own. The entire set is, this entire set is $29.99 for all four dies, right? I know that there are places where they have layering dies and they're going to cost you upwards of 60, 70, 80 dollars to get all the dies that are needed to make the layering. But not here. $29.99 gets it all done for you. And now that I've shown you the dies, I'm going to bring over the pixie sparkles because that's what we're going to start with. Um, let's grab a couple colors. Um, let's grab... Uh, this one and maybe ooh, this one purple and a pink. A pink. Maybe a teal. Okay, so there are eight different pixie sparkles, and these are part of the Pixie Powders collection. When you look at them, they look very, very pale. What's inside of them is a dye-based powder that has extra large chunks of mica in it so that they really get a shimmer and a shine. Again, it is very much like a brusho or a Ken Oliver product. I know he has some, and Cosmic Shimmer has the original Pixie powders, which we've done before. This is the new 8 collection where really they're meant to really give a lot of shine. Not glitter shine, but sparkle shine. And I think when you look at them, if you were to see them in a store and you just saw them in the container, you would say, I don't know what those are. I, they don't have much color to them. Even, even the really pink one, it's just you don't get what you should do with these. And while they have put on little color swatches and these are actual color swatches on the front because the 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 way this product works it's non-specific it moves it gives you you can have it very heavy or very light the the color swatches aren't as accurate because you don't know if you got a color swatch that is a little bit lighter in color or one that's a little more intense in color so I want to play with these and show you how to use them. And I think the first place to start also is to tell you these are not anything like a Perfect Pearl. Perfect Pearl is a Ranger product and it is a it is a powdered mica as well. And it is something you don't need to use water with at all. Perfect Pearl, you can use your Versamark and you can stamp with it and put Perfect Pearl over it and it gives a beautiful foily looking, metallic looking effect. These require water. These need water. They won't do anything without water. They look blah if you don't have water. So if you were thinking, oh, I already have perfect pearls. I don't, I, I may not need these. Well, it's a completely different product, even though they both are powder based. So I'm going to start with a plain piece of white paper. Cut me off a piece and a piece of watercolor paper because this is a time where paper matters. A lot of times we can get away with just using whatever paper we have. And to some extent you can do that here as well, but they're going to work better with a watercolor paper. This is from Royal Talons. This is their Art Creations watercolor paper. Is it the best watercolor paper out there on the market? No, absolutely not. Will it get the job done? Yes, it absolutely will. And is it affordable? Yes, it is. I want to use this in conjunction with my white paper. I like these because they're a little postcard. So even if you wanted to stamp on the front or do something on the front and then just mail it off. But I also like the size of them. They're really handy. 
If you already have watercolor paper, do you need this? Absolutely not. <laughs> you do not. But here I've got my regular, this is just 100 pound cardstock, and here is my watercolor paper. First thing I want to do is I want to mist both sides of my paper and just do a light mist. And you're like, well, why would you do that? Well, let's mist up one side. Anytime you get paper wet, whether it be regular paper or watercolor paper, it immediately wants to curl. That's what paper does. Vellum is even worse. Vellum, it'll roll itself into a nice little ball. So if you mist both sides of your paper at the same time, it will eliminate that little curl and your paper will lie more flat. See, look at how it just flattened right on out. So if you're using something, if you're misting with a, a, a mister, like a, a spray pigment color and it's curling up, just do a light mist on the other side and you'll find that it'll uh, settle itself back down. Okay, so let's take a couple colors that maybe are not the brightest colors in the bottle. And I'm going to just kind of tap some on. And you can see it comes out pretty dull. And, okay, well, and then let's tap on some of the blue. So they've added a heavier mica sparkle in here that's a little bit chunkier that gives a really beautiful sheen. Now, first things first, hoping you can see that. Let me zoom in a little bit more. And down a little bit more. Oh, nope, up a little bit more. I was probably fine where I was. Oh, come on, up you go. Okay, so on the regular paper, you can see that it's really not doing much yet. But you can already see that it's starting to turn color on the watercolor paper. So if I now go and mist my paper, you will see it go pow and come to life. I mean, look at that. The colors are beautiful. And if I do it on my watercolor paper, again, pow, the colors are beautiful. You see them blossom, you see them explode, you see them open up. The difference is on regular paper, the colors don't want to move. Even if I add a lot of water, your colors are less likely to move and you can see your little spots underneath. And once it's dry, it's even harder to get them to move. However, on watercolor paper, they don't muddy as much. They don't, they blend a lot easier. They blend with far less water. And they stay open longer, meaning you can play with them longer. Do you need to do it with your finger? Well, no. See, I would never be able to get that look I'll never be able to get that look with regular paper. The paper is too porous and it's absorbing in too quickly. There's a huge difference between them. Not that this is bad. In fact, I'll probably come back. Let me get this one really wet. Let's see if I can move it around a little bit. See, it's dry, so now I'm gonna have a really hard time moving it. I may come back and use this one just to show you. Can you use a paintbrush? Sure, if you don't want to get your fingers dirty, you can get it in there and get a little paintbrush in there and kind of splotch it all around. Absolutely. Can you add more? Can I turn it upside down? Sure, why not? And blend it that way? I have options, oodles and oodles of options. In fact, I can schmooze. I can come back in, get that wet, pick that up and come in and paint with it. But on the watercolor paper, 
you have much more of an opportunity to play. Does not have to be the best watercolor paper on the market. No, it does not. But you do need, it is nice to have the watercolor paper. Can you get away with just plain paper? You can, but you're going to have more of a, um, more of a blended, I mean, you can see the difference in the vibrancy, at least I hope you can, in the vibrancy between these two. This one has absorbed in while this one is sitting more on top, giving me the colors that are much more pop. They're wow, they're holy smokes artichokes. And can I continue to add to them? Sure, absolutely I can. If I wanted to add a little more blue or a little more pink, I can get it a little wet, spritz, spritz. Throw a little bit more down. I can leave it a little chunky so that those big pieces in there stay big and give off a ton of mica. I can blend the colors to make a purple like I'm doing here. I can take a dauber, a little sponge dauber. Get it a little wet and go in and play with my sponge dauber to move my colors. And then when I'm happy, I can call it done. They're beautiful. They really are. Are your fingers going to get dirty? Yes, they are. How do I get my fingers clean? I wash my hair. You can do the dishes. That's you. Me, I wash my hair. But it's beautiful. Now, how long is it going to take to dry? Depends upon how much water you've put on it. This is still wet, but can you see that shimmer and that shine? Let me grab my let me grab my little heat tool from Sizzix really quick and let me see if I can get this one to dry just a little bit. So the Sizzix heat tool, I can get right down on top of it. I just want to get it dry a little so you can see as it dries, the mica is what comes up, that mica, and it's a dual speed, so the mica is what comes up and what starts to shimmer and shine. Oh yeah, okay, that's good enough. Wow. Okay, look at that. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. A little different than this, a little more vibrant in its color because we used watercolor paper. But that doesn't mean that if you don't have watercolor paper, can you not use this? Absolutely, and I will use this a little bit later on to die cut some stuff, I think. Easy to do. I'm gonna set this one over to, I set this one here to keep drying. So let's do one more. I'm gonna wipe up my area because I've got a whole host of colors down there. Now there is a lot of powder in these little bottles. These are gonna last you quite some time. You're definitely not gonna go through them quickly. But when I put the, let me get, let me get a piece of paper. And let's do that blue again, cause that, this is teal marine and it's beautiful. And let's do it with the green. Ooh, okay. So I need to mist, almost forgot, I need to mist. I got my fingerprints on them. I'll live with it. So when I put this on there, you can see the mica in there winking at you. Do you see it? So it's not just a dye-based powder. It's that that special sauce that they've put in there to help it get that shimmer and glimmer. Now, if you already have the original pixie powders, well, this is just a nice added addition because now you're going to be able to mix them all together. And if you've got something similar, well, again, these are colors that you probably don't have with the amount of mica that are in them. So you can add them to, look at it, blossom and bloom. Look at, did you ever think, okay, this is that, where's that green? 
This is the green. This is what it looks like in the bottle. There it is on the paper. It's beautiful on the paper. Absolutely beautiful. And you can mist and you can let them run into each other and move it and add more. And take your little dauber, get some water on there. Take your little dauber. This one is by Aladine. So we're using the Aladine daubers because, well, we've kind of let Ranger go. <laughs> If you've been watching our Going Going Gone, you've seen that Ranger product has been in there. We love Ranger, we do, but we really have to stay true to manufacturers who, who support us and stand by us. And gosh, Ranger's such a big company and we're so small for them that, um, that it's better that we, we, I mean, you know, keep it cool Kevin at Aladdin. He's always there with a, a hand ready to do whatever he needs to do to help scrapbooking made simple. And I don't think we'll ever become important to Ranger. And so we decided, you know, we need to we need to support the manufacturers who really support us. And Aladdin would be one of them. So their little blending tool we're going to be using just from Aladdin. Look at how beautiful is that? I don't know if it shows up on camera or not, but I am in love. <laughs> Now, let's dry it a little bit so you get a better feel. Gosh, and while I'm drawing it, I can move the, the water. I can kind of shape it around and move it around. and see the shimmer come up. It's still wet, but oh my gosh, it's beautiful. I think I might add a little more green to it. I really like the green. So I'm gonna mist just a little bit. I'm gonna put some more green right on top of it and really get that green to explode. Mist it, and this time I'm not gonna blend that green in. I'm just gonna mist it and leave it where it's at so it kind of stays chunky. When you dry it, if you dry it, again, it moves around. It's like it's dancing in front of you. And that's the water that's sitting on top of the watercolor paper allowing the colors to blend and to move. So this time I left some of the green chunky. So it really has a beautiful, beautiful mottled look to it. They are so pretty and they are so vibrant but do you always have to blend your colors? No, absolutely not. Let's just do a single color. And how about we do the, we'll do the purple. And I'll do the purple on plain cardstock too, just so you can see the difference. So mist on both sides, mist on both sides. No, the spray bottles haven't gotten here yet. When they do, I will let you know, I promise. Those are from Ozzy Andrew and he's, he's waiting on them like I am. <laughs> so let's throw, hmm, well, pull blush, uh, well, let's try this one. Let's just do a single color. A little water, a little water, 
and maybe I take my little dauber. And I spounce a little bit just to kind of move it around. And this has got some purples and some blues in it. Let's add a little bit more and I'm gonna throw some more on top of it. Oh, that's not the right one. This is the right one. And I know that looks like it's a lot going on, but trust me, it isn't. There is so much powder. So you can see how this one's not blending quite as well. It's not moving quite as well. Can you get away with it? Of course you can. We're crafters. We'll make it work. <laughs> but the watercolor paper is a little bit easier. Of course you will. We'll make it work. Just bounce that in. Give it some more water. So this is just one color. And it's got that blue and that purple going through it. I can let it run. I can move it around. I can add more and let it kind of sit and stay heavy in some areas. It's up to you. You can make it super light. Okay, so let's dry and see what we've got. The more water you have on your paper, the longer it will take for you to dry. So it's still wet, but it's all, it's get, you can see where it's still wet, but it's getting there. It's absolutely getting there. You can go back in on top, spout some more, pull it out. On the watercolor paper, you really have options. On the regular cardstock, oh, but you can see how beautiful is that color. Do you see that? On the regular cardstock, not as many. You can still get it done. You just don't have as many options. Um, let's throw some of this on and see what happens. This is kind of a pink and spritz with a little water. Oh, 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 it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Oh, I love this one. Okay, dry it super quick and then I'm going to let it sit to dry for a little bit. Okay, you can kind of see where I left it super heavy to get that beautiful look. But will it work on black paper? Well, let's try. Let's get a piece of black paper and see what we get. This time I am just using regular cardstock. I am not using watercolor paper. Let me clean up my mess. So does it have to always be white paper? Heavens no, it can be whatever makes your heart happy. It'll move better on the watercolor paper, but I'm going to do it on black cardstock. And I think I'm going to use a blue. 
This is beyond blue. Okay, wow, you can really see the sparkle in this one. And it's almost like a feather dusting of color. You don't want to have your fan blowing when you're doing your color because it comes out in such small, light little bursts. Oh my gosh, is that so pretty? And then we add the water to it. And now look at it. Uh-huh. Hello. And this is on regular cardstock. I might not even blend this. I might just let it sit just like that and dry. Oh, looks so good. Yeah, I wouldn't have a fan on doing this. <laughs> oh, right? That looks good. And because I'm not blending it, I'm not, the, the regular black cardstock works perfectly. As I'm drying it, it's flattening out. Ooh, oh my gosh, is that beautiful. So on the black, let's do another one on the black. On the black, it's a little bit easier than using a white cardstock because that black acts as a color on itself. So let's try, missed it both sides. Let's try the Pixie Sparkles Purple Affair. Now when it comes out, you can see that there's two colors coming out. So there's a blend of color in there all on its own. Let me hold it up so you can see. And then let's add our water. Ooh, so pretty. <laughs> Can I turn it upside down and schmooze? Yes, what will happen? Well, you'll get a schmooze. It'll flatten it out and kind of fan it out up to you what you want it to look like. Can I go back in and pick that up? Absolutely. So come on, maybe it'd be better on white because it's gonna be really light. Oh, but I like the really light. It's gonna be really light on that black. Let's try it on a white and let's grab my white and let's just give a little bit of a spritz and let's go in and see if we can pick some of this up on a white piece of, <gasps> ooh, yay. Yeah, nothing goes to waste. And now I can let that dry and just have a super soft look. So I can keep going in there and picking it up until it's all up. And if I give it a minute in between uh, going back down, you'll see that it's starting to darken in color. I'm layering that color. And you're going to get the shimmer and you're going to get the shine. But holy smokes, look at that one. Let's give it a dry.
Okay. Here's the leftover. Can you see the shimmer coming through on the high points? Can you see it? Right up in here, all along the areas where the ink stopped and kind of puddled. And then we have it on the black. So very pretty and easy to do. But you're like, okay, now what do I do with these now that I've got them? Yes, they're beautiful. Well, you can make cards with them. You can make layouts with them. There's tons to be done. You can die cut with them, which is what we're going to do. But I think, and I think I'm going to keep that one too. I think before we get there, maybe I will take, which is the one I started with? This is the one I started with, right? Hmm, maybe I'll take that one. That was the first one that was on just plain cardstock. Although this one has turned out to be absolutely beautiful. Now, I don't know, it was certainly not, it was certainly not thought out, that's for sure. Two companies did not get together and say, hey, we're thinking of making this and why don't you make that to coordinate? This I'm positive. But when I saw these, um, the new Pixie Sparkles, and I saw the colors, and I saw the colors of the opulent, no, the mystical, the mystical cardstock from Sizzik, I was absolutely shocked because the colors are, they're, they're the same colors <laughs> that's in the cards dog pack. <laughs> and I am so positive that Creative Expressions and Ellison didn't get together and say, hey, <laughs> why don't we coordinate your, our powders and your card stock? But oh my gosh, does it look good together, <laughs> right? I was, I was, I was flabbergasted actually that how well everything blended together. I was like, are you serious? Nope, lighter green. That one's too olivey. Brighter green. I mean, they're just perfect. It was, like I said, it was a bit shocking for me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, you know what, I'm just going to tape these on down and, um, and mat them out so that maybe we'll do something with them in a little bit. What did I do with my Stacy tape? Okay, so I've got some Stacy tape going on here. And you would obviously use much more than me. I'm just trying to get it down. This is double-sided adhesive. Peel the liner off and you are good to go. You don't have to have scissors to cut this. You can just tear it right off the roll, easy peasy. Oh my gosh, it's like perfect. Totally unplanned, but works beautifully. So if you've already got the opulent, no, it's not the, I have to stop saying opulent. It's the mystical card stock pack. There's the mystical opulent pack too, which I think we are sold out of, or very close to being sold out of it. But man, bam, done. Put a sentiment on and call it good. Gosh, that is beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? Let me get this one cut out too. Bam, done. Stacy, that was close. I don't know, sometimes two worlds collide and they make magic. It's kind of how I felt about these. And you're ready to go. Where's that pink one? What did I do with that pinky one? 
Huh, pinky one. Hello, pinky one. I don't know, is it the darkest pink in here that's gonna go well with that? Or the lighter pink? But you have options. Oh, that's the same pink, Stacy. <laughs> I liked it so much, I picked it twice. How many of you have done the same thing? You liked it so much, you bought it twice. <laughs> Oh no, look at that. Oh man, that's fabulous. Okay, so we've played with the pixie powders, the, the new pixie sparkle powders that will work with your original pixie powders or your brushos or your Ken Olivers. They are easy to use. I will tell you the one color that is a little bit tricky is the Coral Crush. This has this huge amount of gold to it. Let's put it on a black piece of paper and a white piece of paper. It has a huge amount of gold to it with a little, with an undertone of red coral. But I want you to see If you want to add a gold element to anything that you're doing, any of them, you're going to use this one last. It tends to come out better if you use it last. So piece of wa uh, watercolor paper and my black. And let's do a quick mist. Turn it over. My fingers are dirty. I'm getting my fingers on them. And let's use the coral. Can you see how dramatically different they look when it's on dark paper versus white paper? Even, even just on the cardstock, they look different. Now let's give them their bloom. So it's got an undercurrent of gold and red. And when it dries, it really dries heavy gold. And I think I don't think that the green is going to look great with this, but we're going to try it. How bad can it be, right? It's only paper. Wow, I've got it really wet. I mean, it's just flowing into each other and everywhere. And I can let it do that or I can let it sit. But can you see that shimmer of the gold coming through? I'm gonna tap this off. And tap it down. Ooh, okay, I'm kinda liking that. Maybe pick up a little bit more of my green there. And let's give it a dry, although I got my purple fingers in it too.
Okay, I think that's pretty dry. Enough for you to see. Now remember, I just mixed two colors, the green and the, the coral. And look at that deep red I got out of there. And I've got this goldy orangey coming through, mixing in with the greens and the yellows. It's beautiful. And then I have down here still, I'm not going to, well, I hate to waste it, but we need to move on. Okay, so now that we've played with all of this, what do we do with it? Well, we're going to die cut with it. We're going to use these to die cut our kaleidoscope dies out of. Gosh, it's almost dry. Okay, but can you see how goldy that is? It looks different depending on what kind of paper you put it on, but look at that shimmer. So now you're looking at this and going, well, that's very, very busy for me. <laughs> okay, well, we can make it less busy. What if we die cut? Now, I'm gonna grab my kaleidoscope dies and we're gonna talk about those for just a minute. Kaleidoscope dies, each set has four dies. It has a background die, a base die, die number two, and your detail die. So I'm gonna grab, and then anywhere I could, I kind of filled in with little extra uh, odds and ends and words and things like that, just because I had the space to do it. So let's pop these out. Now the background die can be used all by itself. You don't have to use anything else. You can use this to make the most beautiful cards and layouts and mats. And every one of my sets has a background die and no two background dies are the same. But then you have the three layering dies. This being your base die, it has the least amount of detail. This being your middle die, which is now adding detail to it. And your final die, your most detailed die, or your outline die, which gives you the entire look. I'm gonna cut all four of these and I'm gonna use um, colors that are, mm, let's see, colors that don't, that are, well, no, that's too small. I need bigger than that. Uh, one, two, three, Oh, I'll use these right here. Okay, so I'm gonna use four colors that are totally different from each other. And that way, when we layer them on top of each other, you're able to follow along much easier. These are not necessarily the colors I would use every day, but you never know, it might turn out to be absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> you just don't know. So, I'm gonna cut my first die out, uh, I'm gonna cut the base die, which is right here, the one that has the least amount of detail, out of my dark purple. Now I'm gonna bring over my Sizzix Big Shot machine. My dies typically need a precision base plate. That's kind of important with my dies. If you have very, detailed dies, very intricate dies, and they're not cutting well, and you're using a Sizzix Big Shot machine, a Big Kick machine, a Vagabond machine, you may need a precision base plate. And they're sold separately, but they will allow your dies to cut much more like butter. This die here isn't so intricate. I really don't need to use my precision base plate, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway because I'm gonna need it for the rest of my dies. Now a Sizzix Big Shot machine has a roller built into it. Right underneath here is a roller and it's got a handle to it. I'm on a magnetic platform with my precision base plate on top of my magnetic platform. Is that advised? No, Sizzix would prefer that you not do that because the pressure can cause a damage to your magnetic platform. I do it all the time. I leave it to your best discretion whether you want to take the chance or not. And if not, then you just use the platforms that came with your machine. You do not need to have a magnetic platform to make this work. But a precision base plate would probably be a good idea. Because it's got a roller right here, and this is a rectangle die, I don't want to have my 
my first edge going into my machine to be parallel with the roller. What happens is you get a kathump, a loud kathump. It doesn't hurt the die and it doesn't hurt the machine. It pretty much gives us a little <gasps> panic moment, but it's okay. However, if you just rotate the die just a little bit so it feeds into the machine a little bit differently, so it starts here and gradually hits that, that line, you're not going to get the kathump. Now I'm gonna roll this on through. And again, to learn more about a Sizzix Big Shot machine, I really recommend you look at YouTube number 355. It's the latest do's and don'ts on a machine. And if I want to, I can have this go back. It probably doesn't need it because it's a pretty simple die. But just to be on the safe side. So this little tiny piece of metal that has no blades in it at all miraculously has cut through the paper to give me my first shape. And you can sort of start seeing the outline of the vase and the flowers. So I'm going to get rid of this. And I'm going to bring my second shape, which is the middle. And that is going to layer right on top of here to give me more detail. So I'm going to do that in the green color. So you can really see the difference between the layers. A lot of our customers will do this in a monochromatic look and it's beautiful. So three or four different shades of blue layered on top of each other or purple and it's absolutely gorgeous. Now this die is, in fact, I'm gonna cut it down. This die is a little bit more intricate than the one I just did. So when I get to the end of rolling it through the first time, I am gonna do a little bit of a rotate. You may have a machine that, um, that you can send it through and it's fine one time and it cuts everything the first time, but I always like to be a little extra careful. So I'm going to tilt my die, just like I did before, and put it at just a little bit of an angle. Put my cut plate on top. I don't need a second cut plate on the bottom because that precision base plate takes the place of, my, of a cut plate and I'm gonna send it on through. If I tried to do a cut plate, my, my platform, a cut plate, my precision base plate, my paper, my die, and another cut plate, it would be too thick and the machine would not let it go through. So there's one. And now just to be on the safe side, I'm just gonna rotate it and I can either go I can pull that little piece out. I can either do a 90 degree rotation or a 180 degree rotation, a little twist. And why am I doing that? Because I want it to hit the roller in a different way. Everybody's machine, no matter who the manufacturer it is, everybody's machine has a different sweet spot. Every machine has a sweet spot. Oh, see, it doesn't wanna go through because it's hitting that right on there. Let me twist it just a little bit so it doesn't take it in all at the same. Let's try that. Oh yeah, much easier. So I was too parallel and it was gonna give me a big kathump. Now I'm not and it rolls through just fine. I can turn it around and I can see the beautiful cuts on the back. Pop it out. Oh yeah, look at that. Put that one there. Oh well, the idea was to hit the trash can. SMS girl Dora says I'm, I'm maybe a 60 percenter on that. <laughs> and you can start to see 
the layering capability. I still have one more die to go. Let's do the detail die, the most detailed die in the pink. And let's bring it on over. Put it on a slight diagonal just so it doesn't feed through the machine. I suppose I could do this and, and you could hear it. Let me, so I'm straight on. I didn't rotate at all. And let's see if I can make it go kathump. Uh, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Uh, kathump. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're trying to avoid. Did it hurt my die? No. Did it hurt my machine? No. Did it hurt my heart just a little? Yes. <laughs> if I just put it on a slight rotate, you're going to avoid all of that. We've had people literally stop in the middle of die cutting because they heard the creaks and the cracks. See, even still, you still get a few little creaks and cracks, but not that big thump, not those big wowsies. They've called us in the middle of die cutting saying, what do I do? We're like, finish it. If it's rolling through, it's okay. Finish. If you had to force the roll, that's a different story. Okay. And look at all my bits and pieces. Just fall on out. That's the beauty of a precision base plate. Oh, his floor. I tape my YouTubes. I don't have a studio or anything like that. I have in my husband's office where he comes when he's working here. And um, that way he has his space. I'm down in the store, in the retail store all day long even though the retail store is closed, that I'm in the middle of everything. And he's up here. So I come up here and do him up here. But then when I leave, <laughs> his floor is a hot mess. <laughs> okay, now you can really see the definition. You can really see the detail. And our very last one to do is our background eye. my machine on over. I'm going to cut it down just a little bit so I can make sure that I can do a nice little rotate. These are called chemically etched dies. They're wafer dies. They're wafer thin and there's no blade to them so they're child friendly because you can't really hurt yourself on them. There's no blade to cut yourself and it's the pressure from that roller that cuts the paper with that small little ridge that you feel. And let's go through. Okay, again, being a very intricate die, I'm just gonna rotate so it hits my roller in a different way than it did before just so wherever the sweet spot is, it gets the whole die. Oh, look at it, see, you can see all the beautiful cuts. That makes your heart happy when you do it, and then this happens. <laughs> That's what you're striving for. Oh yeah, can you imagine piecing this back together, doing a paper piece of this? Oh, not today, but <laughs> I bet it'd be beautiful. <laughs> Elena! <laughs> She's the queen of paper piecing. <laughs> Look at all this. Okay, I'm really going to strive to get it in the trash can. Oh, I did. Happy day for Mr. SMS. All right, so now I have the background. In fact, I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Now I have the background. 
I have the base, I have the first detail die, and I have my top die with the most detail. Now it's up to you how you want to put them together. Do you just want to use die two and three? And put it against something like that? Do you want to use die one, two, and three? And put it against something like that? Do you want to use die, the base die, and the top die? And not do the center die? and put it against something like that. Do you want to do the top, uh, the base die and the top die with the background die and put it against something like that. Do you want to use, do you get the, you get the jest? You want to get rid of the base die? And use die two and three with the background and put it against something like this. You have options, oodles and oodles of options on how you want to build your layering die. Do you just want to use the background? It's pretty enough. Maybe. Maybe you want to die cut some of these. Maybe you want to put these aside and maybe you want to die cut out of this. What if we cut the base out of this? I love this one. It's so pretty. It makes my heart happy. What if we die cut? the base. Out of this one. Now what you'll find is that the watercolor paper postcards are a bit smaller than the die. So they're a bit smaller. So you kind of have to center it in between. You're not going to get the full frame. And when I mean frame, you're not going to get this entire frame. It's going to be gone or a very little of it. But because it's the base die, I don't care. I'll put another die on top of it that will give me the frame. So let's bring it over. I don't care that I'm not going to get the whole frame or pretty much any of the frame. All I want is the design because then I will take the top die, the one with the most detail, and that will give me the frame. So let's cut this. Oh, see, I'm, I didn't rotate it. Well, I'm already, I'm gonna just go, 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 go. I'll get a thump at the end. I know it sounds horrible. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, cut perfectly. Okay, so let me pop this on out. Oh, I'm in love. See, it didn't get all the frame. I'm okay with that. my little bits and pieces out. And let's see if I can take a piece of black paper and cut my most detailed. Let's get some of my pieces out. I want to cut my most detailed die out of the black. Got a piece right here.
Let's lay it on, put it at a slight angle, close it up. So this is the die that has the most detail to it. That's gonna give me all of the outline. And let's send it on through. Now I'm cutting 100 pound cardstock right now. So I'm gonna send it through, I'm gonna rotate, and I might even send it back just to be sure, because I'm asking it to go through heavy cardstock and an intricate die. I'm gonna do a slight rotate, send it back. No thumps this time. Let's see what I get. Mm, I think I'm gonna go one more time, just to be on the safe side. get it to take it just to be on the safe side. Oh, am I going to get a thump? No. Okay. Oh, did it double cut? I don't know. Did I move it? Yep, I double cut it. So by me act, moving it to rotating it one too many times, I double cut. Darn it. All right, well, it's only black paper. Let's try one more time. Gosh darn it. Let's get a new piece of black paper. I rotated it and I moved the die out of place and it double cut. Okay, try one more time. I think I'm going to take it back and then rotate just to be certain and then rotate don't move and front and back just to be certain let's see what I get this time all the way through and I'm going to go all the way back Looks good. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> Doesn't it make your heart happy when they all just kind of fall out? And that's how those little, they're not called chads or anything like that. They're, we actually call them fallouts. <laughs> just for that reason. When I'm designing dies, and I'm like, okay, these pieces need to be fallouts. They need to come out. But it is very detailed. And you would probably, with a Sizzix Big Shot machine, not be able to achieve this cut without that precision base plate. Now you may have a machine that is a little bit tighter, a little bit more pressure, and you don't need a precision base plate. You may have a brand new machine that hasn't loosened up any and you might need a you might not need a precision base plate. But if at a sometime in your machine's lifespan it starts to get loose, it will be more and more difficult to cut intricate dies. And the more you use your machine, the looser it will become. It takes time, don't get me wrong, it's not like it's going to happen right away. Uh, you may be able to get two, three years out of your machine before it really loosens up, or you may be doing mass production on your machine and you need that precision base plate like yesterday. 
Okay, come on out of there. Come on. There we go. Okay, I've got almost all the little bits and pieces out. Enough for you to be able to see. So again, where I don't have the frame here, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's going to drive me crazy not having them all out. I'm going to put that frame on on my top piece. How pretty is that, right? Yay! Love it! Beautiful! Let's see, what do I have over here? Um, I have, what do I have over here? Oh, I have this one. What if I did this? Ooh. Gosh, I don't know. Hmm. Do we want this one as a base? Or do we want to try this one as the secondary to put on top of here? Let's try it as the secondary. I'm going to cut this one out of the middle die. And let's see what happens. So again, I know going in that I'm going to lose... I'm not going to get all of these out. I know going in that I'm not going to get my entire frame. I understand that. I know that because my postcard is smaller than my die. That's fine art for you. They do things in different sizes than paper crafters do. <laughs> I'm going to put it down. I'm going to give it a little twist. And I'm going to send it on through. I don't want to lose that one. And I don't want to lose that. I'm going to put these over here so I don't lose them. And I'm going to send it on through. And one. And then let me do a rotate. And just chuck that piece off, do a little rotate, and send it on back. And let's see what I've got. Ooh, that's off center that. There we go. Okay. Oh yeah. Looks good. If it ever doesn't look good and it's still in your die, just send it back through again. Oh, this is so pretty. come out. There we go. Look at how beautiful that is die cut. And then we could put that on the purple. And the pink on top. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. And it's so easy to do. We could do the black. On top. Love it with the pink. We could get rid of the purple here and do the entire back in purple. What makes your heart happy? Options, options, options. We could do we could do the black 
Oh my gosh, is that beautiful? And then bring over. Ugh. Okay, dreamy. And you're saying, okay, but you're not gluing any of these together, Stacy. How do you get these glued together? That is like the easiest peasiest part of all of this. <laughs> Um, let's see. I have something called sticky dots. This is a sheet of sticky dots. It's micro dots, hundreds of, gosh, this is just falling everywhere. Hundreds of thousands of micro dots sandwiched in between two pieces. One of them doesn't have any sticky. One of them has sticky. How do you mount everything down? Well, oh, I don't know what I feel. Well, okay. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to lay my die cut down right on top of the sticky dots, close it up, and give a good push. Now, anywhere you see the black paper, the sticky dots are going to adhere to the paper. Anywhere you don't see any paper, those sticky dots are going to stay right where they're at. So you can use them again and again and again. One sheet of sticky dots goes a really long way, and you get 10 sheets of sticky dots with my packet. And they are eight and a half by 11. So let's just put that on top of this. They are, you're able to, they're repositionable for a period of time. At some point, you have to commit and let it be because it will dry and become permanent. So now nobody knows underneath you didn't get the whole frame because you don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Now I could open this up again and put this down and give a good rub. Now I can't color the sticky sheets. I know lots of you have asked me to do that. I can't afford it. We're a small company and they just, the, what they need me to agree to, to be able to do that is out of my, out of my league. <laughs> and put that there. I mean, really the mystical paper, who knew it was gonna work so perfectly with the new Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Sparkle product. Who knew that the colors were gonna like go? But when I saw them, I'm like, oh, oh. So that's using big die cuts to get the job done. What if you wanted to use this? Do I have one that I have? Oh yeah, here, I can use this one. What if you wanted to just die cut little bits and shapes? Remember I did this one and I said, I'll come back to it and I'll use it. Let's use it on this one. This was the one done originally on just 100 pound cardstock where it doesn't really move as nicely as if you were on your watercolor paper. This one's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> I'm just, I'm very excited about that one. Okay, so what if I took, we have this one too. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Do I have an older one that I played with and I can do both? Ooh, what if I did it with that one? Okay, so I'm gonna use the Sue Wilson dies that I was telling you about earlier. We have three of them. They're teeny tiny. Get well soon. Happy birthday. And just because. I was going to use them last week with the slimline dies because they are perfect, perfect, perfect size for the slimline dies. But I decided to use them this week. Now I can take and 
put one there and put one there and put one there and cut all three at the same time. Yes, I'm still going to use my precision base plate. I'm going through 100 pound paper with a very fine line written word. Does it matter if they kind of tweak and turn? No, just as long as they're not sitting on top of each other. This is where keeping those pages that you thought, oh, I don't like what I did with that. Well, first I think you should finish anyway, but just in case you choose not to, this is where using that product, those extra little pages that you're not crazy about come in handy because once you die cut them, you lose the big overall appearance and you're left with perfect little die cuts. Okay. That's beautiful. That came out beautiful. It's got the sparkle. It's got the shine. And I took it from a piece that I said, meh, didn't work out so well. But when you die cut out of it, think about all the flowers and the seashells and, oh my gosh, the, the unicorns and the rainbows that you can die cut out with the stuff that you just were not overly crazy about. And look at how perfect these sizings are. I love these little minis. So we also have most of these. <laughs> you may have a hard time finding these anywhere else. But if your local retailer has them, get them from them. And if not, then come shop with us. Look at how perfect the sizing is. Now, what if I took Oh, what if I took a piece of black paper and I took, I'm going to put those to the side, I took a piece of black paper and I took the one that's the lightest one. They call it a uh, pale blush. I'm going to mist my paper really quick. some pale blush down get my little dauber mist again look at it. you can see the sparkle can you see the sparkle in it mist it again and that sparkle is going to come so true but I really want to blend it in Let's dry it really fast. Stacy tape just to put that down.
You'd use more. I'm just trying to get it down so you can see it. And put that there. Maybe trim off the sides a little bit. Zoop. Zoop. And now grab another piece of black. What sentiment do we want? Do we want get well soon? Do we want happy birthday? Do we want just because? Well, this is for me. So I'm going to say get well soon because my back is just ouch. I am literally sitting on the edge of my chair. <laughs> Get well soon, give it a good rub. Pull it up. You could do this if you have stickers. Do the background and then use your stickers or your peel offs to get your sentiment. Maybe I want it a little bit bigger than that. Get oh, my tea is a little off, but we'll live with it. Zoop, zoop. And we can mount it right on. Get well soon. And this was cut out of the yucky piece we didn't like. We could even take that and then put that on there and do a double mount. Oh, you get where I'm going, right? Tons to be done. And the Pixie Sparklers are an easy way to achieve such a beautiful, beautiful look. Can you imagine die cutting something out of this? or finishing this into a beautiful card. And you have all the options that you need with the layering dies. You have everything you need to give you plenty of opportunity to play. Even when you don't want to layer because you've got that background die that you can use anytime. They're just, they're just fabulous. And when you, when you have the opportunity to play, well, that usually makes everybody's heart happy. What look makes, makes you happy? How do you want to finish it? Maybe you don't want to use the pixie sparkles at all. Maybe you just want to use the paper. Maybe you just need a really cool background for something. I don't know. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. You get to decide. Okay, holy smokes artichokes. What did we do today? Oh, well, a ton. <laughs> we talked about the Pixie Sparkles from Creative Expressions. It's part of their Cosmic Shimmer line. These are a dye-based powder with a mica infused in them and the mica is larger than average giving you more of that unbelievable sheen really they only have eight colors in the pixie sparkles for now i would think that they'll probably look at bringing more in and you can use these in conjunction with your other products whether it be from uh brushos or the original uh, pixie powders 
or if you have some Ken Oliver stuff, yes, you can mix and match by all means without any question. Just remember, if you have the opportunity, use watercolor paper first. If not, it will work. You will get it done with a regular paper. It just doesn't give you the opportunity to move as much. But if you're not going to move it at all, you're just literally going to spray it, well then your, your basic cardstock will be fine. But if you want to be able to move it, watercolor paper is going to be better. So we talked about that. We talked about the layering dies from my Kaleidoscope collection. And there are four dies per set. Each set runs $29.99, which is a heck of a value. All my dies are always value priced. You can only get simply to find it scrapbooking made simple. But my gosh, I, again, I know places that they're wonderful companies and we do business with lots of them, but you could end up paying easily uh, $60, $70, $80 to try and get all that you're gonna get here for the $29.99. My dies are limited, they're one and done. When they're gone, they're gone. We talked about my sticky dots and how to make those work and gosh and just about making pretty things and that even if you're not a die cutter even if you're just starting to get into card making or scrapbooking you can use these for your layouts just because we show card samples that's because it's easier for me to show on camera but you can make the most beautiful layouts with the pixie pattern uh, powders absolutely on a 12 by 12 page you can do this. They make beautiful mats. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to show you what's on sale and then we will get to our samples. So I've got the three Sue Wilson, Get Well, Happy Birthday, and Just Because. Showed you those earlier. There'll be an I Want It All on those, or you can buy them open stock. And again, we pretty much have the lock on all the inventory pretty much worldwide. <laughs> I'll put the Aladdin up with the, there's the little refills and the dauber that I use. We're going to support the companies who support scrapbooking made simple and Aladdin is one of those. Thank you very much. Keep it cool, Kevin. We've got the watercolor paper from Royal Talons. Again, I'm just going to put the postcards up. You may already have this. We use this in the beginning of the the year with the YouTube where we made swatch samples out of all of our markers and such. So this was the paper I used then. You may already have it. You may already be out of it because you used it so much to make all your samples. But there it is again. My lovely sticky dots. Ten sheets. Ten bucks. Can't go wrong there. You've got the pixie powders. We'll do them in open stock and an I Want It All bundle. There's eight colors and I love them all. I will tell you, the green, the green makes my heart happy. It just pops. It does. I've got the, I still have the exclusive launch on the Sizzix. This is their Mystical Cardstock Pack. We'll keep on the YouTube yummies and my dies. So let me show you the storyboards from my dies. We've got the one that I was using today. and the two storyboards to go with it. So it'll show you all the dies that we were using today, plus the words that you get, and then some of the ways to layer them together. Just to give you an idea of what can be done. But I think we did, I think we did well today and you got a really good idea. Then we have my hummingbird. And remember the hummingbird I kept separate and the hummingbird has its own layering pieces. So you can use the hummingbird on its own or you can use it with the frame. You can use the background on its own. You can use it with the frame. You absolutely have options to mix and match. You can use any of the backgrounds with any of the other kaleidoscope sets. And here she started to kind of layer for you. It's pretty, just beautiful, right? All on its own. And then we have my favorite, which is my tulips in their little pots. 
I wish I could grow things. Maybe that's why it's my favorite because I can't make anything grow. And again, some samples of how you can layer and what the pieces look like individually. And here's another one. And then Elena put together just using some of the dies with different backgrounds. So this background comes with the vase set, but you can see how it would look. See, and here you can use this one this way, or you can use it that way. So different backgrounds, mixing them up. Or you don't have to use the backgrounds at all with any of them. Use the backgrounds all on their own. And last but not least, All right, sample time. Okay, so I believe this is Doris. Pretty, right? Yep, Doris. And here Doris just used the background with the pixie sparkles. Pixie sparkles. and the Sue Wilson die. Here she's got the happy birthday from Sue Wilson. And the pixie sparkles. And here she just used the background to make a card. And then she put one of the little fallouts there and your love you. And here she just used the background with the pixie sparkles. Do you have anything? Nope, no, okay. Pixie sparkles, just the background. I love that she made the pots with the pixie sparkles. Love that she made the pots with the pixie sparkles. That's Doris. Then I have Belinda. And Belinda has painted hers in to give that real big pop of color. And here, I love it, she used um, she used texture paste and she used the stencil or the, the die as a stencil and built up texture paste and painted them in. And you've got the pixie as the background. Love that, Belinda. And again. And then we have Claire. Hoping this is Claire. I know the rest of them are Claire. And I love that she made the tulips out of the pixie sparkle. Look at how pretty they are. And here you've got happy birthday. And the next one is stunning. So here's the background done with the pixie sparkles. She die cut an aperture in her card and put the background behind it and then the, uh, the hummingbird and the just because. That's a beautiful card, Claire, beautiful. Oh, and I love this one too. Look at how pretty is that. And again, take these ideas and use them in your creative process, whether it be mixed media or altered art or scrapbooking. It's not just about card making. Uh, did I do this one? No. It's about learning a technique and then utilizing it in how you create. Great job, really great job. Then I have Elena, and Elena's the one who also puts the storyboards together. 
I showed you this one in the beginning. Isn't that beautiful? And then Elena put her little hummingbird on a wobblers and she's mixed from the two sets. And Elena, and you've got the Just Because that was die cut out from Sue Wilson. And she made a five by seven card by just matting more. And here she just used the background. And here she's done some paper piecing. And again, just the background. The backgrounds are beautiful all on their own. And a background. You can see that in my way background. This is Elena. And then the last samples we have are samples that were done just using the Pixie Sparkles. Now I put this sample together. Probably should have something black to put it on, but oh well. I was playing and I put that sample together. And I was playing and, and I put that sample together. All done with pixie powders. And I was playing and did that one. <laughs> and then the girls did these. Oh, I bet I taped this one down. I did. Look at how cute is that? Done with pixie powders. And look at how beautiful is this one? With the pixie sparkles. Different than the, the original pixie powders because these have more mica in them. Larger pieces of mica. She cut them into strips. That was very clever. Separated them out. This is beautiful, Claire. I bet this is Claire. I think this is Claire. I think that's Claire. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And look at the tag. How cute with the just because. How cute is the tag? And here we have happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, all cut out die cut with the Sue Wilson and the Pixie Sparkles. Uh, and this is just cardstock that she found, a pattern paper and cardstock. But the happy birthdays are all done in those Pixie Sparkles. And look at how easy is this. Top half done in Pixie Sparkles, the get well soon die cut down in the corner. Can't get much more simple than that. Same here, look at how easy this is. A block of the pixie powders, the just because, die cut out a butterfly using the paper that she got the block from. These are easy and simple. Anybody can achieve this. You can do this honestly. There's no right and there's no wrong. Look at the vibrant color on that. You just have to let it be and go for it. And then last but not least, holy smokes artichokes. She's got the, the peacock and then she matched the pixie powders, the pixie sparkles to the peacock. Holy smokes artichokes. Wowie wowie. 
All right, you guys, let me tilt on up. Let me tilt on back. We did it. We got through. And no major gasps of me going, ouch. <laughs> so, oh, where are you going to find all of this great product? Well, some of this you might be able to find at your local retailer. You may. The Simply to Find are exclusive to me. They're my design, so you're only going to find them here. And the Pixie, uh, Pixie Sparkles and the Sue Wilson dies, your local retailer may have them. If they do, shop at your independent mom and pop shop. Independent being the key word like us. We're just so few people here right now. Support those who are who are doing their best to keep their doors open open and um and then if you can't get it there then come online and shop with us the pixie sparkles i know we have the majority of the inventory for the entire world i know that um i know that the sue wilson dies you may be able to find here and there um so take a peek around go introduce yourself if you can to your local independent retailer tell them that stacy at scrapbooking made simple says hi I will, don't forget to post your comment. You want to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. And I will see you all next week for YouTube number 386, counting down to 400. All right, you guys, have a super weekend. Bye.